is up, you guys, and welcome to the season five premiere live taping episode of your, your favorite, favorite aunties, aunties podcast. I'm so excited. Ooh. I cannot believe it's season five. Yeah. Season five. It's incredible. And then we also just made two years. Yes, this yes, we week. did. We've been podcasting happy birthday for to two us. years. So happy birthday to us. So I'm excited for this premiere episode. We got some things to talk about. I think in season five, we've established ourselves. Uh, y'all know who we are. Y'all know how we feel. And beforehand, we would give a lot of disclaimers. Like we would yeah. talk about stuff, but we would always be like, you know, y'all take it with a grain of salt. And it's how we feel. But I think we're going to dive in for real, for real this season. Yeah. Less disclaimers, yeah. more boldness. Yeah. Because y'all know how it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, we have a special guest. And y'all know we don't normally have guests on. So if we at have all. a guest uh-huh. here, they are somebody. Uh-huh. Okay. And so if you were at the Houston Live Show, you already saw him. But if you haven't, this is my amazing pastor, Apostle mm-hmm. Carrie. So I am so excited to have him join our conversation. Y'all don't understand how much this man has impacted my life. Just I am who I am partly because of the wisdom he's imparted into me. So Amen. the things that I tell y'all about relationships and stuff comes from him. All the quotes, I'm like, my apostle said, it comes from <laughs> him. So now we have him live in person, right? So yeah. we can get all the wisdom live. So I'm excited. So we have our in-person audience. We have our live audience tuning in. Hey, y'all. We love y'all hey. so much. Thank you for being with us today. And let's go ahead and jump in. Let's jump in. So we've been having some conversations, uh-huh. um, and we've touched on it before, just about some things that we're going through in life right now and what got us here. And I've talked to Apostle about it, too, with just like incomplete teachings, um, just being naive, being very zealous, and how we weren't really set up for success. Yeah. And so we're now having to deal with the aftermath of that. So I want to go back, talk about some of those things, specifically probably zooming in on dating, relationships, marriage. Um, and just get some better understanding so we can move forward with some wisdom. Right, because you and I woke up. We're not we're not living in that fairy tale. We woke up in the dream. So come on, you know today we're gonna we're gonna title this one once upon a time. Once upon a time, because for all the fairy tales they told us, baby, come on. And I believed every last one. of Every them. single one. Prince Charming Ooh. was coming to get me. Okay, right after he preached his sermon. <laughs> Right. Right. We thought, well, I know I did. I thought I was doing the right thing. Not to Mm. say that I wasn't doing the right thing, Mm. but I didn't yield the results that I thought I was going to have. And so it led to some disappointment. It led to me just feeling like I'm in a place where I'm still just trying to figure things out. Yeah. And I feel like I should know by now, like I'm 33. Yeah. But I feel like I'm just beginning, if that makes sense. Like I was living in a bubble and now I am beginning life in a real way. So let's go ahead and let's talk about dating. Let's talk about Mm. dating. What is one of the fairy tales that you believed about dating? And then let's get Apostle's perspective on it. One of the fairy tales I believed about dating was I did not have to participate. Mm. I didn't have to. I just needed to work and serve my church and do the will of God and have my prayer calls and do my this and do my that and write that sermon and write that book and just stay on Destiny's Cards. And, you know, he's just going to be looking for you me. Need I'm to just be gonna, found. We're going to collide into each other. <laughs> uh, in purpose. In purpose, we're just going to meet each other. Kingdom marriage. He's just going to see me and he's going to know from yeah. the moment he sees me. He's going to look and say, that's my wife, you know, and hold. It is not like that. Nothing like that. It, well, at least for me, because results may vary. Bruce, it, worked yeah, for, it works for some of them. Very true. It works for some of y'all. But for your TT, that it didn't quite happen. And now I'm finding myself 34 and I'm single because... I didn't necessarily give some dudes the type of the time of day. Now I do believe I'm in the prime of being with somebody right now because it's like the woman that they are going to get is going to be such a gift, mm. such a beautiful thing. Because who I am today, I'm amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still have some. I know that's right. I still, <laughs> <laughs> I still have you know some work to do, but that's going to be established within the relationship as well. But and that's a whole nother. Because that's a, go th- ahead. That's another thing that. Go ahead. But one of the biggest things was that I did not have to participate. But why do you think that that's something that we're told as women or as people in the church? The reason that a lot of times people say you don't have to participate is because they don't want to be accountable for the advice that they're giving you. Mm, mm, they mm. want it. They want to put you out there and just say, hey, whatever happens, happens. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of these people are people of faith. Mm-hmm. They may be praying for you. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. They may be praying. They may wholeheartedly believe that. But 
what we don't look is at the path that individuals have to go on. Mm -hmm. And we don't know that path. Mm -hmm. And many people fear what they don't understand. So we keep things more in a bubble in the sense of, well, it's in God's hand. It'll happen. It'll come. And we lead a practicality out of it. Oh, my God. And without that practicality, we're not even actually living a reality. And that's the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of yeah. the things that I learned over the last few years is if you try to base your relationship or your marriage solely on the Bible, it will fail. Mm. My God, today, you, know, you can't tell Christians that. Hello? It's true. Uh huh. Because that wasn't written for the culture or time that you're living okay, in. Okay, now just now, <laughs> Apostle, now listen. <laughs> Let's stay right there. Stay right there. I, I want to, I just want to tell you this because this don't have nothing to do with nobody else. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I need, I need to make sure that I don't mess this setup. Mm -hmm. So just when you say stuff like that, just prepare. Because <laughs> this is so true. It's true. Like yeah. this was, yeah. the word is true. The word is real. We believe the word was from God and the word was in the beginning. All of the things, all the churchy saying, all the whatever. Yep. Yep. However, comma, mm -hmm. in this current culture. Come mm -hmm. on. Come on. This is, We are not living in biblical times. Our bodies are not living in biblical times. <laughs> Hello? Y'all, it's it, it's a whole nother ball game right now. Come on, but we're still trying to have these principles that don't apply now. The word of God is true. I take nothing away from the word of God. So hear me purely. But it's just we have to understand that there needs to be some practicality and some wisdom being used to say like it's not the same time. We got to figure out how to apply this word to today. To today, Absolutely. come on. Absolutely. Well, Any time that 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 you have a word. It's not just to have it. Mm -hmm. You have to realize the word feeds your spirit. Once your spirit is fed, it brings forth revelation. Your, the way that you operate is off of the revelation. Some people only get it at the word, say, and take it for the word's face value. Right. Mm -hmm. But oh, don't forget the letter kills, but the spirit gives it's life. Come on. Come on. So the word can tell you to love, but it's only what's within you can say this person needs a hug. But if okay. you so if you stick to just the letters alone, the words alone on the page, it it'll kill wherever you're trying to go to. Right. That's good. Right. That's because good. now it becomes law. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what's that's what's happened for us. And I see some people in the chat. The chat. Yeah. Come on. It's the truth. They don't want to have you gotta no discern. church. Come on. Because I know one thing for me too. This fairy tale of like. Well, you got to be a wife, right? Because it says, he who finds a wife. So you're a wife before you get found. And I was a wife and I wasn't a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's frustrating because I spent so much time in my 20s, like, not being single. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I got to be a wife. To an imaginary husband. You can't, He's imaginary. I can't give you the time exist. of day because you're not my husband, baby. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you He's not anything give right now. A chance. That's what I'm saying. I'm meeting a dude, asking him to call it on the call of God on his life. The minute I meet him, he just asked me for the time. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was that serious because that's yep. what I was taught. Like the man of God who wants you, the minute he sees you, he's gonna tell you his intentions, and they're gonna be pure. Oh, and he's never gonna God. try you, and he's gonna this, he's gonna that. Excuse me, no. <laughs> it doesn't work like it that. Does. Then you missing out on a good man. Because he doesn't line up with that stuff. And whole time the person teaching you that, they man don't line up with that either. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello. They teaching you shoulda, coulda, woulda. Come on. Huh? This is what I wish my man was right. like. Or what I right. wish I would have done. Right. But you're not saying that. So I'm holding on to it like, yes, let me do this. Yeah. And one plus two is not equal in three. It's not. Now I'm mad at God. Hello. I'm mad at God and not even the person who told me. Because they long in the wind. Come on. Come on. So, Apostle, I want you to get into this. Like, what should we be looking for? As godly women living in reality, like practically, what kind of traits can we look for in a man that would dictate like a successful relationship? Okay. Well, um, one of the things that I like to speak about is this guy named John the Baptist. Um, he got his his head cut off. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't get his head cut off because of what he was preaching. He got his head cut off because he didn't understand that the dispensation had switched. What you have to look for is what's happening within your dispensation. Okay. Not okay. what was told to you. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we only go for the tradition. Mm -hmm. And when we go for the tradition, we trade our reality for something that has already passed. So the head of what we're looking for, the happiness, the love, the, uh, the joy, it's already beheaded. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if I can go into one area that uh, we may have spoke about a while ago of what women need to look for, what they need to be aware of, mm-hmm. four things that men carry that women should be aware of. Come on. Take note. Those okay. four things are this. <laughs> a man comes with either a cape, a cap, or a cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all got me? Uh-huh. A cape, cape a cap, cap or yeah, a cup. Uh-huh. Now, the cape is your knight in shiny armor. That's the man who's going to make sure everything is taken care of. He's going to look out for you all. You may not like how he does it, but nevertheless, he's going to do it in a manner that it will leave no kind of excuses. He has enthusiasm. He has effort. He has an explanation. He has excitement. He's earnest, and he brings this to the relationship. Now, the next category is a cap. A cap is a cover-up. Come on. And many women get a cap and a cape mixed up because normally the cap is cute. <laughs> they be cute. Fine. They become cute. <laughs> they become cute. They be cute. Uh, but the difference in the word cap and cape is simply the letter E. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He lacks enthusiasm. He lacks effort. He lacks an explanation. You ask him a question, I don't have to explain. Ooh. The only E that he possesses is what's called an excuse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you get this cap in his cape mixed up, not realizing the cape is what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. So you have to look, is a man capable or is he capable? (laughs) They be capping. The next step Uh is a cup. Uh So he comes with a cape, a cap, or a cup. Uh A cup is the problems that a man Mm possesses. Now the difference between a cup and a cap is that a cup has the potential to become a cape. Mm -hmm. It's how he handles his problems. If he dump his problems off on you, if he wants you to exert your energy, then that cup is not what you want to buy. Mm-hmm. Because once you start pouring into that cup, if you don't look in that cup and find a crutch, <laughs> then you will leave that cup. You will leave depleted and he'll leave with whatever you gave him. That two thousand dollars. Come on, have fifty three cents. What, what, what you say? What you say? What you say? That come with nothing. Hello, and leave, leave with, with everything. everything. Mm. My God, won't they come with a cup? Hello? Mm. The last one is a cross. Mm. That's somebody who know what they call to do. Come on. That's what they put first. Mm -hmm. They put their stuff first. And this cross is automatically a cape in the cross. I told my wife, I said, listen, no matter what happens, no matter what times we're going through, as long as you can keep your lips crossed, your legs crossed, and your heart crossed, baby, you'll never have to cross your fingers. I'm going to make it happen. It's built in my cross. Come on. All right now. I'm trying to. Yeah. I said, warn us. Okay. You. We got to keep That's this good. Thing. That's yeah. good. They say apostle spitting. Okay. <laughs> I love it. And somebody else said apostle is real quotable. No, no. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. So, friend, you've encountered. Uh, I've encountered a lot of mad hatters with that cap. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I done had a couple with. A, I, you know what? I had me a good dude. Back in the day, uh-huh. I did, mm-hmm. and that was not the right time. Mm. It was not the right time. So you had the cape, but it wasn't. The I right had time. a cape. It was not the right time. But also, he he was a good man. He just wasn't mine. He mm. wasn't mine. He genuinely wasn't. I can recognize whenever I met him or whenever we were in each other's presence, it was I was very wounded, very very hurt. I had gotten out of an abusive relationship. He was an incredible guy. Um, still, just a stand up man of God. Truly, he was. But I was so mean and shut off and even in us dating he knew that that wasn't the time to approach mm-hmm. me but you know <laughs> he saw the material <laughs> <laughs> so I mean we we did end up getting into a relationship but we realized that we were better off as friends but there are some incredible people that you will meet and it just seemingly isn't the right time but also again he just wasn't my person mm. he, he, he truly wasn't not to say it wouldn't have worked or anything like that but at that time who I was it, it wasn't gonna work yeah Yeah. Another thing I wanted to get into as well, I know for us in our 30s, we're just at a different phase, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And some of it is a little bit of regret, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because we spent so much time maybe not doing what should have been done when it comes to dating and things like that. And now we're at a place of pressure. I know I feel it. It's a lot of pressure. I'm 33. The clock is ticking. What are we doing? When? What clock is ticking? All of them. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like we have as a woman, there's just a lot of pressure, like start a family and just all the things. And so when we talk about things like abstaining and all of that and trying to correlate 
the word to the culture now. And I'm like, look, they had arranged marriages and stuff. I'm out here trying to date. I don't know. <laughs> it's taken a long time. You know, like, yeah. how do we how do we reconcile the word, the principles, things like abstaining to what we're doing now when it's like I'm doing the best I can yeah. and it just hasn't happened yet. Right. Okay, well, what you do is you yield to the word that's inside of you and that's not the word that's in front of you. Mm. The word that's in front of you is there to keep more of a judgment, keep you in line. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't listen to our spirit. Mm, mm. You don't you don't listen to what's really there. And that's the truth. The God mm -hmm. on his truth. Another thing, we have to empty our mind of everything that's been told how things should be. That's a prison in mm -hmm. itself. That is. That is. The prison of popular opinion, the prison of, of other people's opinion, the prison of principles that we believe we supposed to have. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Because what if God wants to do something new? He say, consider not the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Mm -hmm. The reason we can't see the new thing because we steady considering the old thing, mm -hmm. which leaves us automatically in a life of enticement. Mm. So you said something earlier, and I and I was trying not to interrupt you, <laughs> but you you were saying, what are some things that we should look for? And I know so many people who would have stopped you in your track. You, you don't shouldn't need to be, be looking, looking for anything. And looking. it's like that's exactly why I ain't got nobody now, bro, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, no, because that's a real thing. Like, they will stop you. People will stop you for, from participating in your own destiny. Okay. And it's it's hard to let out those people because some sometimes they're trusted voices. Yeah. But what is it that you do when you, what do you say to those people who are telling you these antiquated things? Like, this stuff that is out of date. Like, you're, you're not in what I'm doing. You weren't dating when the internet was around. Yeah. Like this, you don't you don't know what it's like to be at this particular point in your life, knowing that you're an amazing catch and you're this and you're that. And then you're telling me, oh, don't look for anything, but also wait until you're found. And then you got to serve. How if, if I'm serving, how can I be outside? Not mm -hmm. to say I'm not going to serve if I'm outside, but it's just like, where, what do you say? How do you rebuttal? What what is a wise way? Because I could tell you what I say, <laughs> but I can't say that this is always the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you nod your head and smile. Mm. Do the opposite in wisdom. Whatever is told to you, do the opposite in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Don't look for anything. In wisdom, look for everything. Okay. Mm. Don't worry about what he look about look like. In wisdom, con be concerned with what he look like. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. Because apparently when these things are being said, it's to keep you blind from seeing what you need to see. Yeah. Mm. And when it to, comes to the point of when it says a wife is found, mm -hmm. it didn't say she wasn't noticed. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to be found and put yourself in a position to be noticed. That's why when we say when you go outside, put you something, put on. You something on, smell mm -hmm. like something. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, now you're so. Mm -hmm. I have gotten into scents now. I have too. Right? I I've have gotten too. in my smell good bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the compliment that I've been getting lately mm -hmm. is that I smell delicious. <laughs> okay. And that that's the point. That'll cause you to get noticed, won't it? Hello? <laughs> huh? And I cannot tell you how many men will stop me and say, what, what are you wearing? What do you have on? Come get me. <laughs> it's not necessarily what it's called, but that's that was that's the calling. On it. But you know, it's it's really important for people to understand it's okay to desire. Oh, that, and that's another thing. Mm -hmm. When you desire partnership, when you desire marriage, when you desire a relationship or companionship, it seems like that is just immediately categorized as an idol. No, this is an honest, earnest thing. It'd be different if I wanted to be out here gallivanting with anybody. But or I doing want it. to be married. But I want to be married. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do the honorable thing and live the honorable way. But it's, if you want it up, you want it too much. And it's just it's like, idol, what does yeah. that even mean? I want an honest, godly thing. And it's not so much that I want it above God. I want it in God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. you can't even have, faith doesn't even operate without a desire. Mm. Mm. It's not about That's saying true. this and looking and confessing. You mm -hmm. say, whatsoever things you desire mm -hmm. when you pray. How can we be so fake with ourselves? I don't desire it. I'm just asking for it. Uh -huh. No, you have to have a desire. And some people desire more than others, yeah. you know? And some people, like I said, when people don't have the answer for you, they'll tell you anything. Come on. So it's up to you to decipher. Am I going to listen to this? You know, or am I going to go for what I know is inside of me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what makes it hard because it's like either way you go, you're wrong. And somebody you know? got something to say. Yeah. And then you're left in the balance. Heartbroken. To figure it out. Yeah. Mad at God. Like, <laughs> what? what is it that you want from me? Hello? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Because I could give up on this side and on that side. Yeah. What? And I'm trying to 
hold on. I'm trying to hang in there, but mm-hmm. it's like, what am I hanging on to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I too, uh, Apostle, I was telling her about at Selah when y'all did the panel okay. um, and we were talking about, or uh, Archbishop was talking about marriage and how it's not just an age thing, it's a maturity thing. Yes. And then he started talking about his culture and how a guy couldn't even talk to the woman. He got to go talk to her family. Absolutely. And then they do this whole launch of research like okay yeah. what is he about what is his family line what is all this yeah. and something that the holy spirit just kind of nudged in me was we've made marriage about love when it's about destiny it's about destiny mm-hmm. and so we're living in this like western culture where they're like it's a fairy tale yes he's gonna come get you you're gonna fall in love right, y'all are gonna right. be so in love and we're not falling in love and he's not giving us the the cartoon that came on a, a shiny horse mm-hmm. and picked me up right and so trying to put all these pieces together of What's good enough? What's not good enough? Am I expecting the knight in shining armor when this is a human being who's going to make mistakes? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's been yeah. really yeah. difficult. Because that's we, we're we taught the opposite of that. Like when he comes in, he's going to be right. His intentions gonna are going to be set. Yeah. He's going to be confident. Yeah. It's just like, no, nah, they really going through life just like I am. Absolutely. And there's some things in my life right now I am incredibly unsure of. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm doing the, the very best I can. And I'm incredibly thankful for the people that I have around me who are helping me navigate this time. But it's like it would be crazy of me to assume that the, my other my other half has everything together. It's true. That's one of the things that keeps us from moving forward is because um, I, I'm a true believer that you can actually get with the wrong person. I know that, Talk but about it. you would rather sometimes have the wrong person and find out they're the wrong person than to have no person. Mm-hmm. And so um, when I look at that, um, a lot of times mm-hmm. it's a matter of destiny, like she said. And there's a difference between marrying and getting with the wrong person or marrying and getting with a wrong person. Mm. A wrong person is someone who may do something wrong, may make a mistake. You know, they may hurt you, but it doesn't make them the wrong person. Mm -hmm. The wrong person is a person that's directly against your destiny. Mm -hmm. So could it be that we're listening to the wrong people about a wrong person and missing it all together? Come on. Come on. You got to be mature. You got to be mature. Because getting into a healthy relationship, I, like every time something happened, I was like, right, it's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's over. Like, it's done. Yeah. Like, okay, we're about to break like, up. Like, it's done. Hey, friend, I'm not saying you're wrong, <laughs> but just hold, hold on. on. <laughs> just you know, wait a second. Like, just wait. Just, just sleep on it. Just And again, I'm like, it's over. I'm not saying you're wrong, <laughs> but just Let's just wait, maybe. Okay. Right? I'll be like, just give it a day. Let's just <laughs> right. Give it two you days. You'd be like, just give it a day. <laughs> no, because I'm like, it's over. Yeah. That's it. He's yeah. supposed to know. He's supposed to yeah. be right. He's supposed to be mature, especially at this age. It's like, nah, I mean, we're not in our 20s anymore. Right. So, like, right. no, he knows. You yeah. know, he got it right. He's mature. He's healthy. Like, no. No, you told me something good the other day. And I mean, obviously, I wasn't at that service, but a uh, Supreme Archbishop. Yes. He was talking and he was talking about the pool of Bethesda, but it's going to take you. I about the sermon. No, that really, that that really struck a chord for me. Oh, me but, too. But please uh, share that no, I don't want to butcher it. I'm not even going to touch it. But he was just talking about the, the scripture mm-hmm. of the pool and how we're all at the pool. Yeah. And so that's what I was just describing to her. Because sometimes we feel like we didn't made it. Yeah. Like, I don't struggle in that area. So... How could you? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Right, You're right, immature. Right. You're, you need to work on that. Like, yeah. you need to pray about that. No, we're all there. We're, all we're there. talking about that. I got something else I need to work on. That's right. You know? That's right. Yeah, that thing really touched me. Because we'll think we have arrived. Mm-hmm. And I know, I, I'm like, I done pulled up to my destination. <laughs> I'm waiting on y'all. <laughs> okay. Old okay. Time, like, yeah, but um, you still got some stuff you need to work on. But a lot of things that I learned in my previous relationship, I hate the way that it ended in a way, but... I'm very thankful that it happened because it had been years that I put into practice certain things. So I didn't know what my current triggers are mm-hmm. or what past triggers I needed to work on. And it and it took actually being in a relationship. And I know that sometimes people will say like, oh, you don't need to go from relationship to relationship. And though I agree, I don't think that you should be uh, single, single long term. Long yeah. I, absolutely not. Especially, I think about it um, when even I have company now at, at my place. There are certain things that I do in my home, and everybody else doesn't do those things. Like, I keep all the doors closed. I keep the toilet lid down. Like, I just do certain <laughs> things. It's like, but I'm living by myself, learning to live by myself. Yeah. And the longer I learn to live by myself, I kind of get used to these things. But then if I'm start, I start living with my husband, and he might keep the toilet seat up. 
he might not believe in closing a cabinet or closing a door. Right. I'm going to drive myself crazy because I've gotten so used to I'm not going to drive myself crazy. Um, <laughs> I might be so used to living a certain way. That way, when he comes in, I'm like, oh, no, or I'm trying to be or I oppose him. And that's not what I'm trying to do. But I think it's very important that we begin to just I, I'm, I don't want to say entertain people, but it's OK to get to know date. people. It's OK to date. Yeah. Because they'll tell you, like, don't, you don't need to be dating around. You don't need to do this. I know now what I what I want and what I don't know and what I don't want even the more. All because I was in that relationship. Because there were some things when I was single that I didn't, I wasn't even concerned about. Now, first thing on my list, yeah. <laughs> I need to know. I need to, I need to see X, Y, and Z from you. So it's it's incredibly important that you do explore your options while you have them. Mm -hmm. Because that is how I believe you can end up with. Not not a wrong person, but just the wrong person for you. That's right. That's right. And we have to not be distant from different. Mm. Some things are not about being good, being bad, different. being ugly, being cute, being pretty. Some things are just different. Mm -hmm. So don't be indifferent towards different. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter, we all from Jupiter. <laughs> Not literally. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. We just see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Even though men and women see things differently, we see differently the same. Mm -hmm. I hope you hear me. Mm -hmm. We see things differently, but we see differently the same. Meaning my perspective and your perspective, we both know that there's something different about this. It's up to me or up to you for us to show one another what does this mean, yeah. the explanation. that Why do you keep the toilet seat down? Yeah, It's not a big thing. Yeah. Me and my wife had an argument one time about the inbred because I was raised that the inbred keep the whole loaf fresh. She eat the inbred first. <laughs> so by that time, I don't even want the bread no more. But this was something that was passed down to me. And I still, I still believe I was right about it. <laughs> I still do it. I tell everybody. <laughs> but since I've been with her, I started eating the end bread. Last though. <laughs> but is this big enough yeah. for me to say she's wrong yeah. or she's the wrong person? Yeah. You know? And that's what we have done in this society, in this culture. It's little things, especially with this new little red flag thing that people are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is this red flag, red flag. I don't like it. It's a narcissist. No, 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 no. Take time to investigate different, and then you'll see a different result in your life. That's good. They say you're dropping bars, Apostle. They Come say, on. I okay. know. They say you're dropping bars, oh, okay? They said you, he helping us real good tonight. Real good. I love it. I love it. So, wait. In the beginning, you asked me what one of the fairy tales that I believe. Yeah. What's one of the fairy tales that you believed in? We didn't get to that. Oh, we did. About like, you got to be a wife to be found. Okay, okay. Um, that was a really big one for me because I took that to heart. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife. I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I think just the overall fairy tale of life, like I really had it in my head. I had a timeline. I still have it. I had printed it out. <laughs> I had pictures. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to, and I did, you know, some of it. Uh, I'm going to finish my bachelor's degree. I'm going to finish my master's degree. I'm going to own a business. I'm a, I mean, I had it all laid out because mm -hmm. I thought, uh, write the vision, make, make it plain. It plain. Mm -hmm. Okay, it this, plain. Is, this is going <laughs> to happen. Like this, what? You couldn't right. have told me none of this stuff was not going to happen. I did it. I planned it out. This is cool. And then that was like, I did that, I think, at like 21. And I said by 25. Mm -hmm. And at 25, what was left on my list was I want to get married mm -hmm. and start a family. Wow. And then 26 came. And then 27 came and the years just kept rolling. Wow. And as every year went by, I got more and more upset because I don't understand. I did what you told me to do. And I've always been like that. I'm very much a rule follower. Yeah. So if you say, hey, Nia, do this. OK, like done. Mm -hmm. So when those things weren't adding up, it really affected my relationship with God for a long yeah. time. And I'm still healing in certain areas and realizing it wasn't God, it was me just believing people. And it wasn't even my fault. Yeah. I believed them with earnesty and I feel like God will honor the faith that I expressed during that time. But like you've taught me, like some of it was just incomplete. It was incomplete. Yeah. Not so much incorrect, it's incomplete. It's for the person to have peace of mind that was telling you and also for you to be safe. Mm. But life lessons show you that the things that you omitted subconsciously are the things that you had to admit that, man, I wish I had this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So we're not looked at, we're looking at things to be one track minded because of how we, how, how they're, uh, we're indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. um, you can still get the degree, but while you were doing the degree subconsciously, you factored out relationship. Mm 
a mm-hmm. marriage at this time. Mm-hmm. I'll wait then. Mm-hmm. And not understanding that in your life, the picture of your life was written about your life may have been between 20 and 25. She can have a husband. Mm-hmm. But we already factor those things out. And that's why we have to be mindful when we're counseling people that we don't put our own conscience on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what they'll do? A lot of times people counsel themselves through you. Mm. And if you live somebody else's life, you'll die somebody else's death. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's good. I wanted to um, go back to, because you were talking about different, different. Uh And that's one thing that's really stuck with me. Uh, I remember a relationship I was going through and you really went through that relationship with me. And that is the main takeaway I got from all of our conversations. You'd be like, Nia, he's not thinking like that. (laughs) He's not like you. He's not, that's not even on his mind. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is how it goes. This makes sense. What do you mean he's not thinking about this? And so I've really, and I've talked to her about it a lot. Like, I feel like we've been taught that they need to be like us. Mm-hmm. And so we're looking for this emotional man who's going to fall right. in love and right. he's going to be like so romantic. And not to say that he shouldn't be romantic, but the extent to which we expect some of those things yes. yeah. is like, I don't know if that's realistic. Okay. But we expect what we were taught. Yeah. We expect what we were told. Now you said you wanted him to be what? Romantic. Mm-hmm. What's the root word to romantic? Roman. You're not Roman. <laughs> You're not from Rome. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You need him to be neomantic. Come on. <laughs> you need him to be Shamarianmantic. You Hello? get what I'm saying? Yeah. But these are the ways that we have culturized people yes. into thinking, and you will miss it, and we know this by now. Oh, my gosh. I tell the girls when we, uh, I help them with their dating profiles, and mm-hmm. I'm like, look, a man is looking at your profile, baby, yeah. not your friend. <laughs> For real. You got to, they don't think like us. They baby. nothing. And it's okay. Like yeah. you said, like, embrace the difference, but I don't think it's at the forefront of our minds. So when we do go into dating situations and things like that, we're not thinking, oh, this they're different. Yeah. We're expecting them to be kind of like, our homegirl, but a man. You know what I mean? No, no. Like, and you get on me a lot about that. So, first of all, I think I've gotten a lot of your wisdom <laughs> through me, <laughs> through her. <laughs> she'll be saying stuff. I'll be like, oh, that's right. That's good. <laughs> and then I'll be like, apostle talk. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, no, that's that's like really good. Yeah. And when you would talk to me and you would tell me like, hey, don't do that because to him, this means X, Y, and Z. I'm like, how could it possibly mean that when it's clearly this? It's point blank what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Not, he's like, no, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. And I'm like, what do you mean? This way makes sense. I know what I'm talking about. I did not, in fact, know what I was talking about. <laughs> and Proof is in the pudding. Proof is, the proof is in the pudding. If you, if you look clear enough. And it, but it just really takes going through, well, getting wisdom, going through, seeing and then just making the proper changes. And I know for me, a lot of times I would get down on myself if things didn't go well or if things don't happen. Like just because I'm following all these things like, oh, I've worked on my communication skills. On. I can do this. I can do that. OK, yeah, you worked on your communication skills. But did you work on them with that person? Mm. Now that you've done it for yourself yes. and for all and you've done this, now you have to be specific to the person. Because how I talk to Nia is not how I may talk to my mom or how I may talk yeah. to my sister or everybody has a certain way you need to talk to them. Mm-hmm. And your romantic partner is no different. Like they're not excluded from that. So when I think about going into something new, I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I need to make sure I practice how to be with it. Cause you said like the whole romantic thing, you know, I gotta, you gotta practice with who you're with and being a different person. And that goes back to when I say, sometimes you're not going to learn something until you're actually in a relationship. There's only so much you can do single. That's right. And what really burns my toast Mm. is when somebody tells you, like when you're single or long-term single, like, oh, maybe you still need some more work. No, maybe you need to to shut your mouth. (laughs) I was going to go to that mind your business. That's good. No, because that that is infuriating, especially when you genuinely have done the work. work. Sometimes it, I will say, and I could be wrong, I don't think I am. What I, that was funny. (laughs) (laughs) What I will say is the, the work that I put into myself being able to put it into practice in a relationship, it was really good. And now I know what I need to work on or what I have made real progress in. No, yeah. Sometimes it does take you 
getting with the wrong person to know what to do right. It's true. It's true. true. You appreciate it more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was going to get into that next because I know one thing I've been focused on in this season is getting off the hamster wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like in so many areas, we kind of get told like, okay, if it hasn't happened, it's because you're not ready. And so I'm like, okay, I got to get ready. I got to get ready. Like, what do I need to do to get ready? So, I I mean, I went to the conferences and I read the books and I went to Bible study and I had prayer and I did the fast and I gave a seed for my husband and I did the, you know what I'm saying? And there's all this. I I started therapy. I'm like, okay, I got to get ready. It hasn't happened. Started eating health. Because it's me. I've done the thing. Because it's all, because there's a lot of pressure, Apostle, that's put on the woman. There is so much pressure. Not to say that men don't feel it. I don't want to take away from their experience, but I can only speak from my seat. Right, 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 right. So... There's a lot of pressure on us to get it right and be the wife and be this and be that. And it's just like, what are y'all telling these dudes? Because it seemed like nothing. Nothing. Well, where are these standards coming from? What about the ones that everything that's told for you to do, they're not doing it and they're getting what you desire? Whew. So where's the right standard there. coming from? That's the part of why I be mad. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm going to just tell right. like how it is. Right. I've been mad it's at true. God for it's a while true. behind that. Yeah. 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 A lot of it, a lot of what you're saying, like I speak with people, it's about individuality. You have to know what works for you. If you go to a conference, they put five points of what to do. I'll tell you that may not be for you. Mm-hmm. When you try to do that, that's five points work for somebody. It don't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. And in that time, we try to impose what we think. On someone else. That's why I say even in marriage. I always tell uh, married couples that I do it when I, whenever I'm doing a ceremony. I say marriage people, they don't need space. They need individuality. Mm-hmm. The reason why people feel crowded is because they don't have the room to be themselves. Now, what if you don't know who you are and you get into a relationship? Mm-hmm. Now there's an identity crisis. Mm-hmm. You start to become the person that you with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's why it's not 50-50. It's 100-100. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you may not have in your mind everything that you believe that you want or all that you're supposed to be. But right at this point, you're somebody. Right. And you can only give who you are. Mm-hmm. So for someone to change that, that means whoever you're getting with going to get with whoever they change it into and not the mm-hmm. authentic yourself, mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So I would say sometimes it, it's not just about the relationship with a person. This is how it is in a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. You can't have a genuine relationship with God if you're only doing what people told you to do. That's very mm, true. That's, you that's have right. to go that's talk right. to God how you talk. To, I'm upset right now. You think you don't know? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm upset. Oh, I come to you. and I, You can't. You, you <laughs> have to even be genuine. Yeah. yeah. And, and really, that's how we face relationships with companionship. We go with the principles of who we think that pe- we're supposed to be. Then finally, when we open up, we're upset because, well, you didn't step me and I opened up. You should have been open up from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's for you is for you, but you make sure it's you. It's yeah. not for the person that's telling you. Yeah. Come on. That's good. Well, we say all the time, run the race. Set, set, before, set before you. you. Come on. That's good. That's good. I feel like the, this this topic within itself, there are so many layers to it. Mm-hmm. And, just, and I feel like we always scratch the surface because it's just you can't talk about this too much because people are experiencing this. Every day. Mm-hmm. And it's not until we become honest and want to have these like conversations because a lot of times conversations like this are incredibly cookie cutter and people like step over this, especially even when it become when it comes to the topic of abstinence. Because I know that there are a lot of our listeners who are like fighting that fight. Yeah. Because for us, when we learned people weren't at abstaining, we were like, You say what now? <laughs> so you mean you mean to tell us <laughs> we don't we the only two doing it? <laughs> and that's interesting only to me. <laughs> you remember you the one that told mm-hmm. me about that. I, I, she was coming to see me. We were sitting down. We were talking, right. and I said, "Hold up, hold up, wait a minute. You mean to tell me it's a community of people out there that's not doing it?" <laughs> and she was like, "Yes." <laughs> she said, "They talk to me. They do." It. And I said, "Wait a minute. This is interesting. Tell me about because I didn't know I didn't know that you know existed. I'm coming from yeah. the other side. Yeah. You know I'm." was calming down when I got there. (laughs) So, yeah, now that that's a thing that's real. Yeah. And it's not something that's weird. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. We have to know how to speak to people that are like this. Yeah. Without saying, well, you're wrong for this. Oh, yeah, stay like that. Everybody not called to be an oracle. Everybody not call for for God just to you just sit there and your body never will be touched. And God is going to speak to you through you about the nations and things like that. Listen. 
If God ain't told you that, yeah. hmm, you know, get with what you get. And I'm by no means, am I am I um, promoting someone being promiscuous and things like that? That's not the case. But the rules and the, the bounds, the gates, the boundaries that's placed on one being in that state, I believe it is cruelty. Ooh. <laughs> it's cruelty. Cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> but then, And then here's another thing that, that really gets me. When we make it to like, when somebody finds out Trevor's saying, okay, keep going. This is not the, the goal. goal. It's not the goal, baby. <laughs> this is not Y'all something got I'm trying to tell people. That. No, it's like, oh, that's oh. so good. Fight the good fight. No, find me somebody. Hello, yeah, 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 hello, yeah, yeah. hello, yeah. hello, hello. Like this yeah. is. I'm putting out a. I would like to succeed, call, yeah. right? Hello? Like there is an end. This is a means to an end. Yeah, like Emphasis y'all in on the, the end. Like and y'all I'm in trying a special to end. Olympic or something. You know, hello. Was, I'm not trying to win a medal. Yeah, I'm not. I don't even want a place. Like this is no, no. Like no, take me out the game. Hello. Oh, but it, but it, there is such, there is a high regard put on it, but but there is no reward in it. That's true. Seemingly, 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 or is okay. there? Okay, hear me for what I'm saying, and that was being said. Okay, with this, when I found out that people were like having sex, I'd be like, how? How are y'all doing this? Because I'm so convicted. Mm-hmm. You touch me a certain type of way. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, now, let's wait, because I know where I could take this. Like, let's, 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 let's stop. Let's chill out. <laughs> so I actually ended up having a conversation um, with a young lady that I know. I was like, how did you get over the hump of being a believer and, like, actually doing this? And she was like, you know, now she's uh, in a different place spiritual, spiritually, so she doesn't agree with how she, you know, started out and how she was doing it, X, Y, and Z. But she was like, I wasn't thinking about it when it was happening. I'm like, because it's always on my mind. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, how you weren't convicted in this, but I had to have just a genuine conversation because it, I-, I won't speak for anybody else, but it made me feel like I was crazy thinking, like, how do y'all get over this? Because I couldn't even fall if I wanted to, for real, until the time came. And then I just had to pick myself up. But it it got to a point where I was like, okay, Lord, I'm, I've been trying to do this and I keep on trying to do this. Where, how can we meet each other in the middle? Or is there even a middle ground? Well, I mean, the truth of the matter, what a lot of people don't talk about is some people are called to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. And it's not a matter of you being righteous. <laughs> but right. but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> Those who are called to it, they have the grace. Mm. They don't struggle. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. If you're not called to it, then the truth of the matter is that, oh, man, how can I say this without um, uh, churches getting on me? And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not called to it, mm-hmm. then you're out of place when it comes to grace. There's a grace for you to do something else. Mm-hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. a systematic standard that's put on people to uphold righteousness in the time that we're in when wickedness is running rapid. Every parent would love for their child to stay to be celibate until they're married. Mm-hmm. It's the truth of the matter. So is a parent wrong for that? No. You know, we want that testimony. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, but nevertheless, we still have to allow the children to. Blood of Jesus. The children, <laughs> um, because these children are not little people no more. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. grown. We have to have that talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have to Im- implement things that'll put them in a position with relationships. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. The Bible even says that it's better to marry than to burn with passion. I don't care how we flip that scripture. Mm-hmm. Right. I've been to the Corinth, the real Corinthian church. Mm-hmm. I know where it stood at. Mm-hmm. I spoke with the Greeks, literally, seriously. And that scripture literally means sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So some people got married because, of, and he said it was better for that yeah. than to burn with passion. Yeah. Now, um, mm-hmm. pray for grace uh, <laughs> and endurance. Grace. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm not telling everybody to run out and do that. Right, right, yeah. right, right. We're right, not right. dealing with a God that's saying, oops. Yeah. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We're not dealing with a God that's waiting to sit in there and just say, ah, you only did it because, you know, uh-huh, <laughs> it was wrong. Maybe, how did we not know that was the desire to get your attention to get out of what you were in? Yeah. Ooh. How do we not know that? Because we say everybody had it, but everybody's not you. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we just have to uh, be prayerful and uh, practical. They saying talk. 
Yeah. They said, Shut your mouth so and keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, this is good. Like we we need to have these types of conversations True. because I know I wasn't the only one because I felt like I couldn't come to leadership or anybody who would just be honest with me. I had to go to a peer and figure out, okay, how'd you get over the hump? Because uh you know, like nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody would be direct. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not at a point in my relationship and my womanhood where I can't take anybody being anything other than black or white with me. Mm-hmm. Tell me what it is and what it ain't. Yeah, I cannot handle the in between. So I think it's very important that we just begin to be honest as a people and as a church and as a culture that some things need to change because I feel like. We, we put women on this bus of destiny and then drop them off in despair when we're done being used. Come on. Because we I, I've, I've served so much and I've done so much in the church and I love the church. I, I make uh, I make no plea to, to leave or anything like that. But I feel like where was my help? Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And a lot of people are upset with God because of that. That's right. What I'm saying. Right. They're, they're upset with God because mm-hmm. of that. I don't think that there is any reason why that there are so many women in their 40s and 50s and late 30s who find it hard to find a spouse because the way the church built us up is not seemingly what the men of God want. Come on. And because he go on outside hello? and get somebody else. And I'm like, and whole time I could really, I'm on the same stuff. Just I'm <laughs> trying to keep it cute. You know what I'm saying? And and it was, it wasn't until Nia just really helped bring me out of my shell in the best way, in the in the very best way, where I baby, I was given very much so Mother uh Teresa on my social media for the longest time. And then eventually I started getting Meg because <laughs> but but it took but I had to take off that sackcloth and ashes. Yeah. Like that that's not that's what so it funny. was. People would probably think it was the opposite. <laughs> when it's like y'all don't even understand, like y'all it, don't even know. Your girl behind the scenes. What? It's, it's like, all how you try to up. help. <laughs> like it's all how you brought up. That's yeah. the thing. We're trying to compare it to a culture that they were being prepared for marriage. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? They were being prepared for this. I mean, the 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 only uh let me say this right, uh, the most prominent virgin in the Bible was Jesus' mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the most prominent virgin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that was the case, every woman that they mentioned would have been a virgin that have testimony. Man, these people was getting down. Hello? As a matter of fact, they have testimonies and stories of people who were out there. That's who you saw yeah. Jesus helping a whole a whole lot. You know, so it's not a matter of I have to be like this because now you're telling God how to be God of your own life Mm. and don't realize how arrogant that becomes. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. I will say when you uh, helped me to come out of my shell, that's when I saw more movement in my dating life. Yes. And also, I want to say, I think we um, when we might touch on this again, but. The men of God that I know, because I've been, do I want to say privy, or I've, I've had, I guess, a time with like, I've gotten to know pastors or like lead prophets of the house, you know, just like mm-hmm. the upper echelon men of the yeah. church. You know, I've gotten to know them. They're not on the phone quoting scripture. They are not oh. doing it. Or they These have somebody like, they doing that with. Right. <laughs> or when they get on the phone with you, baby girl, they just want to know, can I have a good time with you? Like, yeah. uh, like do you, and when I say good time, I mean, oh, good time. You know, I mean, like, what do you like to do? Can I take you to the mall? You know, or are you trying to evangelize while we out there? Like, yeah. can you just help me pick out some sneakers for what we doing tonight? Like, yeah. can you go to a concert we with me? Are you cool? Though. They don't, they want to know you down to earth. Yeah. And, and what's wrong with that? That's the thing. But we that's have... what we're taught, Apostle. We got to be right. We got to be this. You got to always have scripture. Modest. You need to be modest and you need to be meek. Holy. You need to be mild and you need to do this. And you need to do yeah. that. And it's like, no, I don't. They don't want that. They don't want it. They don't want it. Then that's, they go get somebody my... else. Oh, no. Right. And yeah. it's still my fault. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm never, <laughs> never good enough. never off. We're never, never good off enough. the chopping block. Never good enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said I got to get off the hamster wheel. Okay. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm and tired. Once I started showing it, oh no, I'm outside. I'm having a little fun. Here they come. The, <laughs> yep. Yep. I still got a couple unread. Living messages. your best life. Hello? Because yep. they want to know, am I coming to visit your house or am I coming to visit your church? Am I am I going out with <laughs> <laughs> Am I am I going out with uh with with you or am I going out with the prophetess? Come on, you know prophetess. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's enough of that. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's because every re- and let me say this. Come on, can we, say can, it. We Come we on. Stop, can we stop with the titles though? 
Like, I only seen man of God in the Bible like three times. <laughs> How is everybody a man of God? Now? You know the standard for a true, a true man of yeah. God? We use it as a cliche. It's the same thing with women. Yeah. Everybody's not a virtuous woman. Yeah. That's the truth. Everyone's not a virtual woman. The qualifications, are, and that's what gets us because people will tell you, if you're like this and this, you're a virtuous woman. We go to this whole conference for the virtuous, virtuous women, woman. but the <laughs> wisest man on the earth at the time said, who can find her? Now, he's looking for her, and he wise. Who can but we find got a whole her? conference full of Come on. <laughs> we got to get to the place where we understand we've been taught wrong. Mm -hmm. We have to get to the place where we understand the teaching is incomplete. Yeah. I always say every message that I bring ends with dot, dot, dot. Mm. It's what you apply. Mm -hmm. It's what's spoken you to go. you. It's the conviction that you get from it. Yeah. Because on. I can't dictate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, is Apostle coming to Atlanta? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to meet this man. <laughs> now, Carl, this is real. And I, I'm so thankful and so happy that we are so thankful and so happy that you are here opening yes. this season with us because there's only so much we can say. And the men need a voice. We will open it up to the men later on. Y'all can say something, you know. <laughs> we'll give y'all a little, you know. But we can only speak so much for ourselves. But to be able to have this real-time yeah. conversation with a man with some sense that's saved. Because <laughs> sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but I have met some men who are saved. They are They're not here weird. with us. They're not here <laughs> They're not here with us. They're not here. And it's like, bless your little heart. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know you mean well, but also you're unwell. Because that's the thing. Like, you're taught that this man needs to be so saved, right? Because yeah. he needs to leave, lead your house. And he's the pastor of your home and all these right, things. Right. And it's like, a lot of them just not really there like that. Not that he won't get there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we are missing out on good men yep. because yeah. he's not all the way there spiritually. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And can we talk about that real quick? Because I want to set some of my sisters free because we are taught, you know, he got to know how to um, speak in the Hebrew and the Greek. Mm -hmm. He got to know uh, Genesis to Revelation mm -hmm. and he got to pray in the Holy Ghost. He got to have his evidence. You do need to have your evidence. But it's but also like if he's not the lead pastor, if he's just a part of the laity, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, what if he yeah. doesn't go to going? church at all? Oh, but he had but he has his relationship for real. Now I would like where's your brother in like what I said brother that's so safe. Um, like I would want to know okay where is your spiritual covering or where are you getting your um? What if he wisdom? doesn't have one? Because if we talk about the twenty twenty four man, yeah, you can visit any church. That's right. The twenty twenty four man, they're not in there. So what, you miss out on him because he's not attending uh, Faith Temple? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you do? What do you do? He's not there. <laughs> well, you have men that know a lot of scriptures. You have men who can pray. You have men who know Genesis to Revelation. It's just these men can't hang around me. Mm. So if I can't stand them, I know a woman can't stand them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what we have to look at is even in that, that's a cap. Yeah. A lot of people, Covering. those who actually know the word or have a relationship with God and things of that nature that's deep, they don't have to say it a whole lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when stuff is being said a lot, it's because you're trying to convince someone of something. Mm -hmm. So people are caught up in what they think things supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And you will miss it. Yep. I prefer genuineness. Mm -hmm. What if you have all the scriptures and you're insincere? <laughs> what if you're at the top? What if you're at the top of the church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you live in a facade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are putting their credentials out there. Right. But the heart of the matter is not there. Yeah. yeah. I would take someone, and that's what Jesus did. Jesus took people. He could have went, do you recognize that Jesus didn't go pick Pharisees to walk around him? Mm -hmm. He went and picked people who was raw, uncut, doing what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't knock a person for uh, dating someone who's not at a place. And let's stop this whole, well, he ain't at your level spiritually. Okay. It don't mean he can't get there. Right. You know, and what level do you suppose you actually are? <laughs> because you might not need your level. You need a man. And you got to stop with God is my man. Oh, oh please. Oh. oh. We have oh, to stop that. Stay there. Because oh, Jesus is not my boyfriend. No, they got yeah. so mad at us. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they got so mad at us. They, 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 they were like, Jesus is not your boyfriend. He's not your Easter bunny. He's not your, uh. He's my everything. God is not your man. God is like, not your man. The reason God is not your man, because God has no manners. Manners are for man. Mm -hmm. How a person treats you, how they behave, that's what manners are. That's for man. God don't need to be saved. Huh? So he's not your man. God is God. The thing that we have is we, um, we're so used to bringing God down to the level of 
a man mm -hmm. to the point that he ceases to be God. And likewise, when we get a when when individuals get a man, then they bring him up to the level of God. He ceases to be a man. He becomes an idol. Oof. Oof. So when you begin to say things like God is my man, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make sense because you're that's just something to say. It's becoming cliche. Mm hmm. Just be real. You be know real. you want a man. Hello. Hello. And it's Just okay. But they can't be real. They, they can't be, be crucified. Very true. Very true. Has it meant? Very I, true. I would like a man. I would like a husband. I would like that up. Oh, that's an idol. Uh -huh. That's why you ain't got one. Yeah. Oh, you want it too much. You need You're to putting pray. it before God. Yeah. You want an honest thing. Now, I can understand it be an idol if I really was just with somebody and it just don't make any sense. Like, you just with somebody to say you with somebody. Then you can say, okay, that's idol. Or you're in desperation. Or you're in this and you're in that. No, I still got some sense. Yeah. Like, if that's not what it is. But people stop you from wanting something earnestly. Yeah, and when are they going to tell you that boredom leads to sin? I don't want to say that. <laughs> when are they going to tell you, being bored, <laughs> it leads to doing what you don't need to do. You start looking at what you don't need to look at. And you don't want to. It's just because someone has told you to live this boring life. Come on. Jinx. <laughs> but I think that's why people relate to us so much on the yeah. platform is because... We uh, we do have liberty, yeah. right? And we're speaking yeah. and we're having fun. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. life is to be lived. You only live one time. Turn up, right? right? And I think I'm just tired. Very tired. I'm. T I just like if you don't believe enough is enough. I'm who I am by now. It is. What you're it not is. going to it's, pray for me. <laughs> I hope you get it through. <laughs> I hope you make it to, to heaven. Come on, come on. I mean, because it's just I know that I've done a lot of performative Christianity in my life. Me too. And. And I've been, but the reason why I was performing is because I know I I put I made everybody else perform for me. Like, oh, you you not living right. You got to clean that on up. Whole time it's like, baby, you at the pool too. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we all mm -hmm. we all at the pool together. We just for we here for different reasons. Mm -hmm. That is just yours can be seen Come by the on. naked eye. Come on. Yeah. Mine, somebody got to go to sleep and have a dream about it. <laughs> huh? The prophet got to <laughs> prophet got to catch that. A lot of what we looking at, God not even looking at it. Yeah. A lot of ways of how we see things, he don't even see it that way. <laughs> My God. Even when you see these, a lot of times, I mean, over the last few months this year, you've been seeing pastors fall and different things like that and slip. Okay, but check this out. God knew they were going to do it before they even done it, right. and he still used them. Right. By the time man found out, they canceled them. Mm. So that shows you yeah. <laughs> that God doesn't see things like we, we see things. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way when it comes to relationships. He's yeah. not. He's He's not looking at all of your principles. Now, uh, let me leave that alone. He's not looking come at on, your awesome. principles. Now, this is we need this help. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So let me tell you this: uh, many people worship the Bible; they don't worship God. Right. Come on. Um, a lot of stuff that we operate in principle wise that doesn't even reach God that reaches the heavens mm. God is not the heavens so you have a relationship with principles and things but don't have a relationship with the one that's above those things mm -hmm. what he's looking at is his purpose how can I say that because why would God tell Hosea to go marry a prostitute mm -hmm. let that happen right now we're going to say it's not God hmm. absolutely missed him on that one this harlot mm -mm. Mm -hmm. huh Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not the work of the Lord. We're going to say it's not God. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Mary. Um, she was disgraced by heaven. Nobody believed her, but she brought something forth. Mm -hmm. I say that to encourage those who are struggling in the area and need some type of encouragement. Yeah. You don't know what God is birthing in you. You yeah. just have to understand that you're carrying something great. Yeah. Yeah. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. So why are we looking for advice from something that has not entered into a person's heart? That's he good. wants to reveal it through you. And you have to allow him to do that. God is looking at his purpose, That's not your so principles. Good. That's so good. That's so good. Y'all no. see why this is my pastor, right? Okay. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> now, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, this conversation is getting amazing, but there there are some um, questions and stuff that we have to get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to actually say the same thing. Come on. Okay. How can two walk together? Unless they agree. agree. All right. So what we're going to do is shift over into some little Q&A. So if you have a question from the live stream, you can put it in the chat. If you have a question in the audience, feel free to ask. And then some people send in some questions. So we have that as well. But we want to take 
uh, the next half and just answer some questions. Y'all like to ask the aunties questions and get our real raw advice. And we have Apostle here too. So let's go ahead and get into some questions. So, and while y'all get y'all's questions together, I am just going to read our church announcements real quick because yeah, I want to yeah, make yeah. sure we get we get to those. Okay. So, um, make sure, if you're not already following us, but I'm pretty sure y'all are, if you're hearing us, if you're seeing us, or if you're in the house, you turn your notification bells on. Yes. Turn your notification Stop telling us you didn't on. know. Okay? Because there's no reason. We email y'all. We doing a live every three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, we making sure we stay in contact with you all. So, make sure you follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, uh, all the streaming platforms for podcasts and Patreon. We are on Patreon. That's right. So That's right. make sure you follow us on there and tag us. So while y'all are here, while you're in studio, you have your boomies, you know, you got your videos or whatever, tag us. Don't just keep your aunties to yourself. Like we are here for the family at large, globally. Okay. I know, I know y'all love us. Y'all want to gatekeep us. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you have anything? Um, oh, our merch table. We have yes. books. We are authors. authors. That's okay. Right. We're both authors. We are authors. So make sure you check out our merch. We also have our t-shirts um, that are here for those of you all who are in-house. Because I know some of y'all have been asking about our merch. It is in-house. It's here. So you got to come to the show and get it. All righty. Oh, in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. So October 12th, you guys, we are going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. If you came to the Houston show... It's going to be even better than that, if it yeah. can be. Like, Houston <laughs> was amazing. Wow. So we're coming to Atlanta. We heard y'all. We have an amazing audience in Atlanta. And we know that we have some uh, listeners who live around that area. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to see us, or if you just want a quick Atlanta getaway. Right. You know, it's a cool place. Just come see us. It's going to be like this. We're going to have discussion. Uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to have music, dancing. And then we'll also do some Ask the Aunties. So make sure you go to your favorite aunties.podcast.com and get your Atlanta tickets. Amen. Okay. Amen. Those are the church announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to turn the floor over to our in-house if you all have a question, and then we're going to go to our virtual audience. Virtual, get your questions ready. If it takes a while to type, start typing. Okay. Everybody in the audience have a question. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Okay, yeah, come on. We listening. Be careful. Don't break nothing. We ain't paying for it. <laughs> Hello? Hello, hey. uh, my name is Melissa, and uh, first of all, you you two are absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous oh, in person. Um, my question is, uh, what church do you guys attend, and what advice would you give someone that um, has not gotten back to church since COVID? Mm. Well, I go to Ambition of Christ Restoration Center, and Apostle Carrie is my pastor, as long as, as well as Pastor Sharonda. Um, so definitely contact him. He's amazing. Uh, we get the real word, and he does life with me. Yeah. I think that's so important. I didn't realize how important it was until I got older that my pastor does life with me. Like, I can call you. I can text you. I can have a conversation with you. And like I said, a lot of the stuff that comes, and even she says, like, my apostle said, my yeah, apostle yeah, said. Yeah. Uh, so definitely check us out. So I actually, uh, I don't have a church home currently, but I have been visiting a church here in Houston called Blueprint Church. So, and that's best, that's been pretty awesome. So what advice do you have, um, or apostle, what advice do you have for somebody who may have not returned to church yet since COVID? Uh, you got to start just by getting there, first of all, yeah. uh, because there are always... Moment, more, momentum happens in moments, and it's those little moments that it's going to take the step of getting back to getting the groove of things. Uh, anytime you relinquish something, it's always a fight to get it back, especially if it's about your destiny. So it's going to be more of a fight to pick up that momentum. I don't know where you were when you were in church, uh, if you were on fire or you was already kind of you know in and out, no matter what it is. You're still going to have to put the momentum in to start going. You know, uh, I don't know if you have a church to go to. Find you one. Kind of stay away from the Internet church right now because it's become a crutch. You know, get in the house. I was always told that Different. you can uh, you can watch the wedding online, but you can't catch the bouquet online. Ooh, that's good right there. I like that. I like that. I know we had a question um, online, but it went away. Can we scroll back up, please? Uh, question online. Yeah, I think you got Julian asked. How do you know it's the right time for you to go to therapy? 
It's always the right time. Yeah, the, it's always the right <laughs> yeah. time. Uh, I think we talked about it. We had an episode about therapy. I've been in therapy for a few years now. Um, you don't have to wait for something catastrophic to happen. Mm-hmm. Please don't wait for something uh, please, catastrophic to happen, please. actually. I didn't start going until after my last breakup um, because I knew that I needed to. I had thought about it, but if I'm just totally honest, I had done all the things to heal and it just it just wasn't done. Yeah. You know, I was like, I, okay, I prayed. Okay, it's been it's been some time. Time heals all wounds, whatever. Like it's just not bad. Okay, like I'm angry. And so finally I was like, let me go talk to somebody, mm. you know? And it's nice to talk to somebody who is just totally outside of your life. Like they just, they don't have anything that would blur them from just being able to talk to you. Um, and then they can't say what you tell them. Mm-hmm. And that's also very nice. You know, like them, them laws keep them from, <laughs> from telling your business. Uh, so there's never a right time or a wrong time. Just start going. Mm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... I, this I think this is a pretty good one. Uh, I'm practicing abstinence and I'm currently dating. When is the right time to say something? Ooh, not on the first date. <laughs> no, that because is because so... we talked about it. It's like right. sometimes people get so into it that it's like a trophy. Mm. Like, and first right. date, let me set my trophy on the table. By the way, you ain't gonna get none. And it's yeah. like, and that's all they hear. I'm gonna like, just help y'all right now. Come yeah. on, especially to a hunter. <laughs> He's just a hunter. talk to the, like why can't y'all just talk right why are y'all talking about that anyway <laughs> do right. you know this man's oh last my name gosh. does he know your last name because on the opposite end I don't like when men bring up sex too soon mm-hmm. I don't know you right I, what like I've literally had a man bring it up first conversation and I'm like I don't know you I don't understand this is completely inappropriate so in the in the same way on the other end why is it that first conversation that first date I need to make sure they know because a lot of times it'll scare them off and you don't realize that they actually will come into alignment depending on the way you present it to them. right right I've had people tell me I've had a man tell me before I just really never thought of it that way yeah he wasn't against yeah. it but he's yeah. like I, nobody just ever talked to me about it I just I didn't see it that way right so you could actually impact their walk whether it's with you or not by how you present that information it's not something you gotta like right. bombard them with I feel like uh talking about sex especially early is just like it, it doesn't make any sense to me if you won't share your bank statements 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 with me I'm not sharing my body you understand what I'm saying like and even and just, I mean, just continuing to abstain, it's just like you're trying to ask me of, of, about something that's incredibly intimate. Like, you won't share something like that with me, so why would I share that with you? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't, for, for me, it doesn't translate. Mm-hmm. So, especially so early, like, do y'all even know each other's last names? Like, do you, are you, do you even know what he does for do work? I like him? Do you like, it's just, there are so many other things to talk about. And you will get to that conversation eventually. But it doesn't make sense to talk about it on the first date, to talk about it within the first two weeks and knowing somebody. It just, there are bigger fish to fry. But that's, again, where we are in our age bracket. Yeah. It just doesn't, that's not something that we're concerned with in the beginning. And then, and then like she said, it's all about how you talk about it. So there have been times where I've met different guys and it's like, they not cool with it? Okay, cool. That's fine. I understand. And then there are others where it's like, I never thought about that. Nobody ever told me that I was valuable or that, you know, I need to protect my seed and watch who I would have a child with and so forth. Or, you know, you would be surprised that God really will listen to you, but it's all in how you deliver the message because Very they're true. really big on that. Very true. Like really, really big on that. So I just feel like if you can't talk about other intimate things, you shouldn't talk about that intimate thing. Mm-hmm. But also don't hide it though. Like don't yeah. lead that man on. Don't lead them on. Let them know. What does lead lead on look like? <laughs> I mean, like, if you haven't presented that information, but then y'all get to doing different things and he doesn't know this isn't going anywhere, that's mm-hmm. not fair. Right, 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 right. That's not fair. So yeah. I'm not saying hide it. I'm just saying you don't have to just throw it on the table. Present it in a way where they know that you value yourself and not because, like, ah, you just can't get none. Yeah. It's like, I'm trying to it's keep it. It's not a gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, good. that's good. That's good. Okay. We have another in-house question. Okay. What advice would you give um, women my age, which I'm going to be 40, okay. um, when who I'm looking to get back out dating? Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would you give us when we live in a world where female social media influencers are influencing um, 
the places men take you on a date, um, how much they got to make mm. and have all these unrealistic expectations. Um, what advice would you give someone like me when going into a dating situation with a man that already has that in his mind that I'm only dating him for his money? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you say the man has in his mind that you're only dating him for his money. And we don't even want that. And the women have have uh, the influence of the women put such a standard of expectation on. Okay. Well, um, you've already been put in a category when you do that. And once something, I've been taught that once something is in a category and classified, you cancel it. So you have to take yourself out of that category by communicating. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what stopped you from dating because you say you're just getting back into dating. So I don't know what it was that happened that stopped you from dating. But what I would say is don't go into it with the expectation of the status quo of what people say it has to be. Do what makes you happy. You know, be wise, be wise. Be patient, communicate, but do what makes you happy and communicate the things that seem outlandish. Communicate who you are because you can only be who you are. You know what I mean? You can only be the person that you are when you try to be more then the expectation is higher. You know, Mm -hmm. you tell a person this is where I am. You know, I'm not here for your money. I mean, you don't have to say it like that. Use wisdom. But this is where I am. This is what I look for. These are my expectations. I'm flexible, you know. When a man hears something, when he looks at a woman and says, you know what, this is just, she's just dating me for my money. The way he sees that in the sense of, I can get this with anybody. And then what if I don't have the money? You know, then it's saying that you're equating what I have to what I'm worth. I have to be worth more than you than just monetary gain or take you on a date. I heard some people saying that Cheesecake Factory is not a good first date. Who said that? I heard some people say you can't pay Not for I, something with a cash app card. I always pay for stuff with a cash app card. Take me to cheese. Uh, and I, and with a cha- yellow no. cash app card. That's what I use. Well, that, and Cheesecake Factory is good. It is good. That just goes back into date who you want yeah. to date. We got to stop trying to put other people in boxes that we don't need them to be in. And this, in the same way, I don't argue with nobody about nothing, baby. If you think I'm here for your money, I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because that's permissible. Because I'm not going to go. I, I can't go. You have made up in your mind. Nothing I can show you or do until you change your mind about it. Well, at least I know that is for me. If I make up something in my mind, it's going to take me either truly listening to somebody else or deciding within my own self that this is different. I like you say truly listening because there's yeah. always that moment of truth where you are hear what you need to hear right, to right. know what's uh-huh. really going right. on. Mm-hmm. It's always this moment yeah. of truth. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody may yell out something. Well, I gave you this. Hey, I never asked for that. But it right. tells you right. how they actually see you. Yeah. But Conversations it, are so important. Yeah. Because I'll tell you this. Any man I've dated with money was never worried about me being there for money. Come on. <laughs> Don't eat me. <laughs> I'm about to. I never heard it. I mean, and they had it, but they weren't right. worried about it. Right. I feel like the main people that really talk about that you don't got it. They don't it. have it. <laughs> you don't have it. They don't it. have it. The main <laughs> or, people that advise you against something is because they don't have yeah. it. Yeah. Or they've just been so hurt, so now they're just scared. Now it's a place of trauma. Yeah. We we can't take the trauma right now. That's yeah. not that's not where we are. So when I say talk to somebody. you can't you can't argue with them about it, that's how you feel. Okay, I may talk to you about it just to gain some understanding between the two of us. But if this is still how you feel, then okay. Just go to where you want to be. So it's like if you're finding yourselves in the maybe the upper echelon uh, restaurants or something at the bar and he's thinking that you're only getting with him because of his money because of where you are. Okay, cool. Go to the Cheesecake Factory. Just have a good time. Be somewhere where you're comfortable meeting somebody in that circle in the same way his guards may be down because he's somewhere comfortable. You, I think it's important for people to find each other in comfort. Mm. Because when you're out of those places or when you're not in the proper rooms where you think you ought to be, when that imposter syndrome comes up, mm. that's when you get things messed up. Or, well, they're only with me because I was at that one conference for tech and mm. I really just, you know, work at Burger King and, you know, it's just... Come on. Conversation. Okay, just, you know, just just find your place of comfort in dating and date who you want and hopefully they want you back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Cause don't don't fit somebody into some box if you if they feel like they can't and that's another thing if you if you're with the guy and he can't believe he with you 
<laughs> you don't believe you with them. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, then they get to thinking, either they go on the deep end and think they've arrived, or they go off the deep end and think like, try oh, to try to self-sabotage self you. Oh, when it's like, they try to baby, I didn't do nothing to you. I'm loving you genuinely. Mm -hmm. And you thinking that... They can't believe it. Hello? <laughs> you like me? <laughs> <laughs> and that goes into the how underestimated it is that the strength that it takes for a woman to adapt to a weak man. Mm. Mm. Wait, hold on. Did we got I think we had another question in the audience. I think we need to get here online. Can you uh move the the comment? Oh, we Somebody got one in asked the audience? if I was still helping with dating profiles. Yes, baby. Send me a DM. <laughs> <laughs> no, they really be DMing me with video. TT, can you look at this? And it's so cute. And it's, <laughs> the, but it's so, it's so funny because a the common theme is like, baby, we, these dating profiles are not for your girlfriend. They're not. They're these are for men. You got to set that bait out, honey. <laughs> a screen recorder, send it to me. <laughs> uh, how can I navigate the dating world when I have a busy or unpredictable schedule? Ooh. I just feel like in your free time, you got to make free time. It may be unpredictable, so go flow with it. If you got a random Tuesday off, find what you're doing in the city. Just, I mean, do something. Like, you just have to be proactive. I actually think that it, it's um, helpful. Because um, I always tell women, be busy. Like, pe women just be available all the time. Like, make him look for you. <laughs> Am I going to answer today? Maybe. Am I available today? Maybe. Like, it's okay to be, um, to have a busy schedule. Be busy. Yeah. Make a work for it. Yeah. You're you not just available all the time. You lose value when you're always available. Anything of value. It should be an obstacle to get to. Come on. That's wisdom. Anything of value. Lean into it. There's nothing wrong with the right man. He'll uh -huh. work with your schedule. Okay. He'll change his schedule for your schedule. There we go. We had a question in the audience. Okay. What's up, family? Uh-huh. Hey, um, uh, behave today. Hey, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is... Um, in our culture, the conversation is said, you have to be healed first before you should date. So my question would be, what is your definition of being healed as a prerequisite for dating? And I would like to see what you all have to say about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Go ahead. So I think that there definitely is an element of healing that needs to take place when before you get into a dating because you don't want to be... Um, you don't want to be... Uh, too triggered. Everything is triggering you every two seconds. It's, it's always something. It's just, you know, get to a leveled out place. Yeah. Just find yourself in a leveled out place because there is some healing that you're going to have to do. And with your person that you're growing with or you're trying to entertain a relationship with, y'all have to learn how to navigate the, the rainy days so you can know what to do when it's sunny outside. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, so with that healing, just make sure you're not going to lash out and hurt. So earlier I gave an example where I out, dated an incredible dude. He was a nice guy. I was just mean because I was not in the place to take it. I was I was not. I had a problem with everything. But again, I was coming out of something, something abusive. That was not the time for me to date. But, you know, you just have to find your place where it's like, okay, I'm cool. He's not going to get on my nerves that much. Yeah. I think that we have to realize that healing is not a destination. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. right? right. And so there's still things that happen that remind me of something that happened in the past, but it doesn't trigger me. It doesn't cause me to lash out, but that doesn't mean I forgot what happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I like to re relate it. I talked about it in a different episode to like a staircase, a winding staircase. Mm -hmm. So even though you may come to this point again, you're at a different level once yeah. you mm -hmm. once you mm -hmm. encounter it. Mm -hmm. So now I know how to handle it. Not that it won't ever happen, but I have my tools necessary to handle any situations that arise. And like you said, I'm not in a place where I'm hurting people, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. So I'm not in a place where I'm going to hurt my partner. That's but good. it's not like, oh, I have to be fully healed and I just uh, don't remember what happened and nothing else ever happens to trigger me that's unrealistic yeah i would say make sure that you're healing right mm -hmm. because you can heal wrong come on and anytime something heals wrong it has to be broken again so just make sure that you're not healing going backwards in your healing but mm -hmm. you're going forward you can date during that time because you're picking up qualities you're learning more about yourself you're seeing different triggers because you're healing the right way yeah right. you know that's it's good. something that you um that you're doing and it's something that you're becoming, you know. So I believe as long as you're healing right and you're moving forward, dating somebody can be a part of that. That's right. When you're healing yeah. wrong, someone else becomes a part of your identity. That person leaves, it breaks you, you have an identity crisis again. And 
mm-hmm. you know, that's so can't good. Move with that. Sometimes relationships show you that you're not healed. It's true. But yeah. how would you, you know think that, that you're healed? healed. Or think so. <laughs> no, nobody bothering you, so it's like right. I'm good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you have to be like healed before. Be working on it. Yeah. But there's no you know arrived destination before a relationship. Because you can get hurt. Yeah. But you don't have to become hurt. And you have to know the difference between something happening to you and something making you something. When you when you get hurt, you know you can move forward from that hurt. You become hurt. Anything that's said will trigger that. Mm-hmm. So when it's all those triggers, 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 then you know you're not healing the right way. Mm-hmm. Some things you'll pass like. T.T. Nia said, you know, you're at another level. Even though it happened, it doesn't affect me like it did before. Right. So that means I've grown. That's good. That's good. Great question. We scroll up. Oh, no. Somebody said, what are some of the most important values that you personally live by, and how did you come to embrace them? Mm. Personal values? I think communication is really important to me. Um more the I value it more and more as different relationships that I host come up. And I didn't realize that talking makes such a really big difference to me. Mm-hmm. When I don't like when things necessarily fade out. It hurts like it hurts my feelings. I don't like being ignored. I don't like um not being talked to. I don't like being treated a certain way because then then I feel like I'm just going to shut down. So for me I like to talk um as best I can, if I have the room to, or if I feel like I'm going to be heard. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely something that's like a really big thing for me. Uh, my top one is purpose. Mm-hmm. And everybody who knows me knows, like, my name means purpose. I had a whole nonprofit, I Am Purpose. It's very much um, a core value for me for everything in my life to have purpose and for me to live my purpose. Mm-hmm. And I even feel like a large part of my purpose is to help other people live their purpose, um, for things to have a reason, for things to have a meaning. I don't like a whole lot of just like frivolous stuff. Um, I can be very serious at times because, again, like everything has to have a meaning. Like, what are we doing? Why? Right. Right. You know, right. like yeah. we could be doing something else. Um, or even I always quote you, if you don't know where you're going, any, any road, road will get, get you there. That. So you need to know where you're going. And that it just helps so much in life. Yeah. Like I have on um, my goggles. Right. And so anything that's outside of that, I can easily be like, no, nah, that's not for me. That person don't need to be in my life. I don't need to deal with that situation because I know where I'm going. Yeah. So purpose is a core value for me. That's good. One of the values, one of the things I value the most is having the right revelation. Mm. Not just revelation, but the right revelation. Because if you don't have the right revelation on a thing, unnecessary preservation will never be avoided. So you'll find yourself sweating in areas that you feel like you need to put more work in just because you don't have the right revelation. That comes with relationships. That comes with careers. That comes with faith. That comes with church. It comes with everything. When you can get the right revelation on things, which takes time, Mm -hmm. you know, I believe that's a valuable thing to have. That's good. That was a good question. Any other questions in the audience? Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so I have a question as far as like navigating the Bible, mm-hmm. right? You know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> navigating the Bible and just figuring out, you know, of course I can start in Genesis, right? And I have. But then it gets into the relatives, and this was sis brother and this sisters. I'm like, are y'all reading that? <laughs> and are y'all really getting through that part? Because I'm like, okay, Lord, like, forgive me, Lord. But how, what do y'all suggest? How, how are y'all navigating it? I, I want to know, you know, where should I start? And, and, you know, what would be a good scripture or, or a good chapter, I feel, to just kind of begin and end? Yeah, I know when I first started studying, I did like topical studies and it was based on what I was going through. That's good. So if I needed, you know, some joy, I was like, okay, what they say about joy and where and what were they talking about and why and how can I apply this to my life? Um, So I always zoomed in on what I was going through because that's how it made meaning for me. I could just read the word and I've done the whole like read the Bible in 365 days. I've done all the things. Right. But it makes a difference when you connect it to something. You know, I'm a former teacher. You got to have that application piece. So the best way to apply it is to think about what you're going through and then go in there and see what does it say about what I'm going through? I think that's the best way. That's good. Uh, So for me, as far as like the different things that I like to read, I love Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, 
Proverbs, um, Psalms, like those are my books. Romans, like just, oh, those are my books. I just love them. Uh, so I think that, that those are like good places to start. But then I'm all, because I can be uh, analytical. So I like uh, when something is like laid out for me, like, hey, this is what you do here. This is what you do there. So those are things that are, that are important to me. And when I think about Psalms and Proverbs, those are things that I can meditate on because they bring me into a better place. Or th- these are things that I can call on in, in times where I don't know what to pray. I can pray a proverb or I can pray a psalm. So when I'm at a loss for words, there is a word. Mm, that's good. I concur with the sentiments of the auntie. <laughs> uh, you can, um, I love Proverbs, Psalms. I love, love all of it. Um, but the topical part, because that's where you can find yourself in it. Yeah. And that's where you can hear God about you. Yeah. You know, as much as you believe that you're reading it, one thing you have to understand is the spirit is drawing you to read particular things. So there's certain things that will be amplified to you. For a closeness, I always kind of refer people to John chapter 14 through 17, because that's Jesus' real prayer for us. It's not in Matthew chapter 6. That's the manner to pray, but it for a closeness. But if I can get you right, I would say touch on different versions of the Bible. Mm something you can understand, you know, and I use the King James version a lot just to seek, but there are other translations that you may can relate to. My favorite version of the Bible is Holy Spirit. So it's not so much of all these different versions, but um, it depends on the area that you're trying to, what you're trying to attain. If you want to study, if you just want to read, if you want to research, you can add to that. Get you a King James and get you one that you can pretty much understand, relate to. Now, they got a new 2024 Bible that got slang in it. I don't refer to that one. Yeah. It's cool. The Gen Z Bible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. I, don't, I, don't I, really, I don't refer to that one. He was mid, mad sus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're about. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't Take refer to that, that one. King James. Yeah. <laughs> but King James got power. And all you're doing, all you're getting, get, get understanding. understanding. So that's good. That's what I would say. So as we are closing, we do want to just say thank you all so much for being here. It truly means a lot to us. Season five is um, reminiscent of grace. So I believe that we've had like such a beautiful grace in God this entire time. He's bringing us into this season. So um, just thank you all for rocking with us, being in house, being in our online audience. And then Apostle, thank you so much for being here with us. We truly, truly appreciate it. Please let us know where they can let them know where they can follow you. Okay. Yeah, I can, I'm on all different platforms. Uh, T.T. Neal been pushing me and pushing me and saying, <laughs> Apostle, you need to get your voice out there. So just recently, she helped me. I started a podcast called Let's Execute. You can find that on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, what's the other one? TikTok. Mm-hmm. You can find it on that at all, as well as YouTube as well. So uh, I'm on there at, at Carrie Thomas or KT Empowers, at KT Empowers. But it's Let's Execute, L-E-T-S-X-O-Q. That's Absolutely. Good. Well, this was a beautiful episode. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. It was very therapeutic. Yeah. I'm glad we got to talk. Thank you so much again for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. And thank y'all for coming and making this our season five premiere like none other. Like oh. none other. <laughs> so we love you so what much. <laughs> and this has been another episode of Your, Your Favorite, Favorite Aunties Podcast. Podcast. Bye. And with that, <laughs> I want to present you all something. <laughs> Oh, thank you. These flowers. Thank you. Are, they come from the same root word as gladiators. And I wanted to compliment the work that you all are doing because it takes being brave to help others and to break out of the things, the shell that you've been placed in. And everybody here in the live audience, I have flowers for you all because what that represents is friendship. And I just want to thank you along with the aunties, for supporting this podcast, for supporting them. Um, You may not know the journey from the beginning personally, but being along with this journey, I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. It was birthed out of pain, and they sacrificed themselves. I spoke with each of them individually. We spoke in the grass, you know. (laughs) So I can attest to what you're actually getting is genuine. It's genuine. And anytime there's that pressing and that crushing, the genuine thing that comes out of that is an anointing. And we know that the anointing destroys yokes. So even though it's not a church setting, 
the Holy Spirit can still flow through it, and the, whole, and the anointing is helping you all. So I hope that you all break free and enjoy that friendship. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Somebody online said, Apostle, stay with a gift. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how a man should be. <laughs> he should always have some in his hand. I know that's huh? right. I know that's right. All right, you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in live. We love y'all.